Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In this video, we're taking a look at the Ambernick Win 600 Gaming Handheld. Let's get started. All right, to kick things off, Ambernick sent me this Win 600 for a fair and honest review, and that's exactly what we're gonna do here. Inside the box is the Win 600, and there's also a little reminder on the top right-hand corner. If you've got a Microsoft account, you can sign into it. If you don't, when you first power on the Win 600, you don't want to connect it to the internet. Also included in the box is a USB-C power adapter, and this one here is rated at 45 watts. There's also a fairly beefy USB-C cable, and this one doesn't feel cheap. Underneath the Win 600, I can see the wipes for the screen protector. There's a fairly light but detailed instruction manual, and something you will want to take a look at if you pick up one of these devices. So here is the Ambernick Win 600 in all of its glory. The one they sent me is the 35. 50E Blue. It features an AMD Athlon Silver 3050E processor, AMD Radeon RX Vega 3 graphics, 16 gigs DDR4 memory, although it's single channel at 3200 MHz, and a 1 terabyte M2 SSD. Immediately holding this, and I'm noticing right away that I'm not the biggest fan of the form factor on it. The bottom left and right hand corners are digging into my palms, and I've just picked this thing up. But we'll talk more about that later, so we'll flip this over to the right side, and we've got a switch here to switch the joysticks from gamepad to mouse mode. And there's also a button for the keyboard. On the back of this device, there's not really a whole lot going on here. We've got a fan and some grooves for your hands. On the top of this device though, you can see the exhaust for the fans. You can also see a reset button, a USB-C port, and a USB port, a USB type A. There's also R1, L1, L2, and R2 buttons. These do not have analog triggers. On the left side of this device, we have volume up, volume down, and power. And flipping this over to the bottom, the first thing I see is the headphone port. And we've also got our speakers on the left and right hand side. For a size comparison, here is the Win 600 directly beside a Steam Deck. And there's a very big difference in size. Although the Win 600 is smaller than the Steam Deck in almost every way, shape, and form, the overall body of the Win 600 is a little bit thicker than the middle part of the body for the Steam Deck. I found that interesting. Honestly, on its own, the Win 600 does seem big compared to some other Ambernick devices, but again, compared to the Steam Deck, it's tiny. So for the first boot and getting started with the Win 600, it does take quite a bit of time. You'll have to set aside a half hour, one hour, or maybe even two hours to get everything up and running. It's basically like setting up a laptop. You've got to sign into Windows. You've got to let Windows do its thing and update and get going and then you've got to install the emulators that you want on this device. Like pretty much every single version of Windows, this has Microsoft Edge on it by default. If you wanted to put something like Chrome or Firefox on it, you absolutely can. And that was one of the very first things I did on this device. I also noticed the Win 600 was very loud when I was getting everything up and running. The installation period, the fan was running at full blast. Just take a listen. I mean, taking a look at the task manager completely proves this point. It's running at 100% and I'm not doing anything at all. It's installing things in the background. Now, testing out some emulation on this device and the first thing I'm gonna throw at it is RPCS3, so PS3 emulation, and this is Tekken 6. Unfortunately, the Win 600 is struggling with PS3 emulation. This game is running slow and not well at all. So I decided to test out something just a little bit lighter. This is Ultra Street Fighter 2 up and running in YouTube. Yuzu, and unfortunately, it's also not running at full speed. The D-pad is working great, everything I want is coming out. The joystick is also working okay, everything I want is coming out. Although I am noticing it's responding just a little bit different than I'm used to. To investigate the joysticks just a little bit more, I've switched away from emulation to games that are installed on this device. I've installed Hollow Knight here. This is the Windows version of Hollow Knight up and running, and it's running very well but the joysticks are responding a little bit off. So further testing this out, I decided to boot up the Devil May Cry HD collection on Steam, and it is running very well. So this is Devil May Cry. It's booting, it's running well, and everything is okay, but the joysticks do feel a little bit off. So the last game I decided to test out is F1 2022, a AAA game. This game is not running well at all. It's struggling, and on top of that, it's extremely difficult to play considering one, the frame rate is not 100%, and number two, there are no analog triggers. I've either got full throttle or nothing at all, or full breaker, nothing at all. 
and the joysticks still feel a little bit off. So to verify these controls just a little bit more, I brought up the gamepad tester. The D-pad on this one is working, but it is very loose. You can activate left and right just by pressing down and leaning left or right on the D-pad with your thumb. You can activate up and down by pressing left and leaning up and down with your thumb. You don't have to be accurate. If you're looking for accuracy, you won't like this D-pad. And flipping over to the joystick, and this is where things got weird. If you take a look on the screen, the joystick is registering in a square pattern, not a circle pattern. I thought something was a little bit off when I was using the joystick. It doesn't feel like it's going in a square, but in game it was registering just a little bit off. And unfortunately, it's not just the left joystick. The right joystick is the exact same, registering in a square. Some people might like this, a lot of people probably won't. And just to prove that it's not supposed to do this, here's an 8-Bit Doe Pro 2 paired to this device. In fact, here's a second look at the 8-Bit Doe Pro 2 registering on screen, and I've slowed down my movements just a little bit here. You can see it's registering along the outside of the circle. It's not exceeding the line. It's not going in a square. It's going in a circle here. Honestly, I have no idea what's going on with this Win 600 joystick. And you can see here it's not registering every single movement. It's skipping areas. It's not accurate at all. So let's get into what I liked, what I didn't like, and whether or not I'd recommend the Ambernick Win 600. And we'll start out here with what I liked. I actually didn't mind the screen on this one. It's 1280 by 720, 16 by 9 aspect ratio ratio and to me it was bright enough for what I needed it to do. I like that Windows 10 comes pre-installed on it and I also like that it supports SteamOS. I like that Ambernick went with an AMD CPU as opposed to something like a rock chip that powers almost every other one of their devices. This chip is a lot more powerful than those. And I also like that this device ships with 16 gigs of RAM. In today's day and age running Windows, in my opinion 16 gigs should be a bare minimum. Although this is single channel as opposed to dual channel, so you do lose some performance, and that takes me into my dislikes. So the very first thing I don't like about this device is that single channel RAM. You're giving up quite a bit of performance depending on the game. You could be giving up a couple frames per second, or you could be giving up something like 20 frames per second on a game depending on how it utilizes that RAM. The second thing I don't like about this device is the battery life. If you're just playing games and demanding games, you might get just under two hours. You can try to turn the screen down to help things out, maybe turn the graphics down in the games. But at the same time, battery life on this one is fairly poor. I don't like the form factor of the Win 600. I think the joysticks on this one are placed way too low. I don't like that it doesn't have analog triggers on it, and I don't like these bottom corners. When I'm holding it, it digs into my hands. The D-pad on this one is a little bit looser than something like an SNES D-pad, so precision is not necessarily its strong suit. Some people like a loose D-pad, some people don't. It's entirely up to you. The joysticks on this one, however, I didn't like at all. And although it played some indie games and lighter titles absolutely fine, if you're looking on emulating PS2 or PS3, this device might struggle for you. The very last thing I don't like here is kind of a big one and possibly a showstopper for a lot of people. This is my second Win 600. The first one they sent for a review died. It booted into Windows. I was signing in and it just powered off and made a really weird noise and wouldn't power back on. I tried wiping the hard drive, I tried rebooting it, I tried a whole bunch of things and it just wouldn't boot. So they had to send a second one for review. I've got a dead one and a, well, a working one. So before I get into my overall recommendation, let's take a look at the price. At regular price, the Win 600 is 400 USD. On sale currently, it's 300 USD. So now for the big question, would I recommend the Ambernick Win 600 at 300 bucks on sale or even I guess 400 bucks at regular price? And the answer is no, unfortunately, I wouldn't. The first device they sent to me was broken. It did boot up initially, but then died. And that is a huge thing in terms of overall quality, especially for a product you're shipping to a reviewer. So that's pretty unfortunate. On top of that, I didn't like the performance of this thing. And at this price point, it's got some pretty hefty competition. To be honest with you, in my opinion, I think Ambernick had a great attempt with the Win 600, but I think it's a little bit too ambitious of a handheld for them. They do a much better job with smaller, more affordable handhelds, and I think this one was just a little bit out of the reach. But anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point, all stuff and no fluff. Huge shoutouts to Ambernick for providing this Win 600, actually two of them, for a fair and honest review. Let me know your thoughts about the Win 600 in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate, save your state.